Welcome to the Engineerable channel. I'm going to be taking a look at this longer Ray 5 10 watt laser cutter and engraver. Now I have a lot of experience with laser cutters and engravers. In fact, I started about 13 years ago with my first laser cutter, which was a total built from scratch kit that worked great. And I quickly upgraded to an epilogue commercial quality laser cutter. And I ran those lasers for many years offering laser cutting and engraving services. And I also have a fiber laser with a Galvo for quickly laser engraving metals. So I have a lot of experience with laser cutters and engravers from a commercial quality standpoint. And I've also helped customers repair their lasers, install new lasers, very expensive and large lasers that were going to be used for commercial level cutting. And in fact, if you check on the playlist in my channel, I have a whole playlist just dedicated to laser cutting and engraving. Now this is going to be the least expensive laser that I've ever owned or put my hands on, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it won't be just as capable as some of my much more expensive lasers. According to the specs, this should be able to perform just as well as my $15,000 epilogue laser, but it may just be a little bit slower for engraving. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's in the box and let's put this thing together. Everything appears very well packaged in here and padded. So hopefully it survives shipping well. The screw bags are all nicely labeled in steps that correspond to the steps in the instruction sheet. So you won't have to go hunting for screws. So let's start with step one. There are two long extrusions. The long one with the screw already in it is going to go on the left side. And the long one that has no screw is going to go on the right side with the large holes towards the outside and the grooves towards the inside. The largest wrench, which is four millimeters, is the one that fits the large screws. The 2.5 millimeter wrench fits these brackets. First thing to do is to slide these corner brackets in. These corner brackets have a special shape that allows them to only fit in, in one direction. Slide them into the longer side pieces. Then slide the rear extrusion onto the brackets. Now take these screws, slide them through the opening in the side extrusion, and thread them into the rear extrusion. You want to make sure that the rear extrusion and the side extrusion are flush and line up with each other when you tighten it. So, so you can put this leg back here to help line things up. and then tighten up the inside brackets. And when you tighten up these inside brackets, you want to do them loose at first, and then come back in and tighten them up. It's a little bit loose because we want to set them in place first. Okay, once it's set, then I tighten it up. Now we're on to step two, adding the x-axis frame. Now we're going to slide the x-axis frame onto the rails. One thing you need to pay close attention to, this is the eccentric nut for the adjustment of the tightness of these rollers on the rail. So when you go to slide this on the rail, you want to make sure that it's not too tight and it doesn't bind. That looks to be just about right. It's a little bit loose for right now on this side. This side is also not too tight. It's tighter than the other side though. If you find that it's too tight to go on the rail easily, then you're going to have to loosen up this nut a little bit here. And then you can rotate this nut back here, which is the eccentric nut, to adjust the tension of the rollers on the rail. So slide the x-axis on in this direction. Make sure that both rails line up with the rollers. Now we're on to step three, adding the front piece. This is the bag of parts that's going to be used for step three. Make sure that you know which direction the corner brackets go in. This one with a long edge. That's the one that goes into the extrusion on the sides. This time we're going to take these brackets and put it into the shorter front piece first. So put this end in here and then 
this end and this side. Now I'm going to insert the M5 by 25 millimeter screw into the end here. And I'm just going to loosely tighten this up for right now. And then I'm going to put the M5 by 25 millimeter screw into the other side also and loosely tighten it. To allow me to properly tighten the front like I did the back on a level surface, I'm going to hang the x-axis gantry off the back of the table and use this surface right here to tighten up these screws. I'm going to use these feet plate again, put them up against the extrusion to have a square edge and then tighten up these M5 screws. Then I'm going to go in with the 2.5 millimeter wrench and tighten up these corner brackets. Same thing as last time, I'm just going to tighten them up loosely to get them into place so that they don't over constrain themselves. Just loose at first. And then once they're in position, then you can tighten them up hard. And then do the same with the one on the other side. Now it's time to install the control box on the frame and the three corner feet. So one foot goes over here, one foot here, then a foot in the front. This is step four, and for step four, you're gonna need the M5 by eight millimeter screw one of those and then eight M5 by 16 screws and this bushing. All those parts are conveniently included in this bag. The larger screws use the four millimeter wrench. We install the right front foot first. Use one of the longer screws, pass it through this hole and it threads right into the frame. Just leave it loose a little bit for right now. Add the next screw. Before I go to tighten it, I always like to use a piece of metal like on top to line everything up to make sure it's lined up with the frame. This front panel is going to use one long screw on the right side and the shorter screw on the left side. Use the M5 by 16 and slide on this isolator spacer and then attach it on the side of the frame onto the left side. This is a end stop for the gantry. And then put the back legs on in the same way as the front leg. For step five, we're going to be installing the timing belts on each side of the gantry. That's going to use this kit with the screws and the T-nuts and these timing belts. The belt has to pass under the rollers and through the slot. And out the holes at either, either end. And then do the same thing for the other side. So I'm leaving just a short length of belt in the front. This is probably the first thing I don't like about this laser is that when you tighten up the screw on the belt, it just digs into the belt. I'd love to put a little piece of flat metal under here that acts as a washer such that the screw is not digging directly into the belt. So then I'll talk about doing this in the manual. I would suggest that during this process, you loosen up this coupler here such that both ends of the timing belt pulleys can rotate independently because otherwise when you go to tighten one side and you pull this tight if the teeth are not in the right position on the other belt you go to pull the other side the the whole axis can rack so it's going to be easier to just pull both belts tight and then move the axis to one end put a spacer block and make sure that it's the same on both sides and then tighten up that other belt So now with this pulley over here loose and free to rotate, then we can tighten up this side without making anything rack. Now we're moving on to step six, which is installing the laser module. This is the hardware bag for step six. All my laser cutters that I have have an air assist 
which is compressed air coming in to the nozzle end where there's a cylindrical cover over the exit of the laser and that compressed air shoots out a small hole that's just big enough for the laser to come out and the air to come out such that it shoots compressed air into the cut that keeps the cut cooler, it cleans out debris, it prevents flare-ups, and it keeps the lenses clean. Because otherwise the smoke from cutting and engraving will rise up and quickly foul the lens and damage it. So without an air assist, I was concerned about how does this laser prevent the lenses from getting dirty due to the smoke rising up. And what I found is that it has a fan up here that blows through the whole unit and then out of this pyramid. So that appears to provide a constant airflow passing through and prevent smoke from rising up there and fouling the lenses. Now my question is, if you don't evacuate the smoke right away, can it not just rise around and recirculate and then foul the lenses anyways? So in theory, yes it will, but it's probably not as serious of an effect as the smoke rising directly from the cut and fouling the lens. Now it wouldn't hurt to have a filter around this area up here to filter the incoming air but that's gonna reduce the amount of airflow passing through here. So I'm gonna start off with these little tiny flathead screws with this bushing. What these do is that they come in from behind the gantry like this and they screw into the back of the laser module. And then these two thumb nuts, they're gonna be screwed in from the front and this is what's going to be used to adjust the height to your workpiece. Step seven is to connect the cable to the motors and the laser head. So the shortest cable here with the connector closest to the control box goes into this first stepper motor. And then the longer one goes into the second stepper motor and the laser head. Now I feel like they don't have a great wiring attachment solution here. They should have a little post coming up or something to zip tie this and provide some strain relief. Maybe I can 3D print something. And the same here. They say to zip tie it. I'm assuming it's to these holes and this holes here. But even that doesn't seem like a great solution. It seems like they have a tiny bit better solution than having these cables just kind of flopping around freely like that. These are the zip ties that are provided for cable strain relief, but as far as how to use them, that was just left up to your imagination. This is just how I'm doing it for now. Like I said, I do kind of want to add a 3D printed piece or something to make this a bit more elegant. I feel like they didn't leave enough free length here going to this first stepper motor, so I pulled a little bit of cable out of this area. Give it a little bit more slack there. The cables travel fine for the full range, but I really feel like the support points could be improved a bit. They've included a few thin pieces of wood as samples for cutting and engraving. These pieces are already pretty horribly warped. They are not flat at all, but whatevs, let's give them a try. To set the focal length, you're gonna need this aluminum focusing column. It's gonna go under here under the back of the laser and you're going to loosen these two screws which are going to allow the laser head to move up and down until it rests on that column. So the column touches off on the laser module next to that pyramid on the back not this piece of sheet metal and then tighten the screws. Make sure you remove the column and then it's ready to engrave. Now that's it for the assembly of the longer Ray 5 10 watt laser cutter and engraver. It was not a difficult assembly, it should only take about 30 minutes to an hour. Everything seems pretty well made. The instructions were pretty good, I had no problem following them. The only things I saw that could be improved in the instructions are explaining how to tighten these corner brackets where you have to tighten them just a little bit loose, both of them loose first to get them into position and then tighten them hard. Otherwise, you've tightened one of them hard first and the other one's not properly aligned, it's gonna jack something up in here. And the attachment of the belts on both sides. I really think that it's important to disconnect this coupler such that both sides are free to move independently 
get the belts on there, then line everything up by moving it forward, taking a measurement up here, and then moving the gantry over, measuring this position and putting it in the same position, and then tightening the coupler up such that everything is square. Otherwise, once you've tightened the belt on one side and you go to tighten the belt on the other side, you can't guarantee that this x-axis is going to be perpendicular to the y-axis. It could easily get out of position. I saw it happening right away. I'll be doing the software setup, setting up a file to laser cut or engrave, and doing some test cuts and engraves in different materials in another video. So make sure you stay tuned for that. I hope this assembly video was helpful for you, either for helping you assemble it or helping you decide whether this is a laser that's easy enough for you to assemble yourself and use. One thing I do want to point out is this laser has no exhaust or filtration system. That means that there's no way you're going to be able to use this indoors. Even just doing some simple engraving on a piece of wood will create a lot of toxic fumes and wood smoke that is just going to make a stinky mess. I had lots of experience with the lasers. All my lasers are enclosed. They have an exhaust system that either draws air outside or passes it through a filtration system. And even those filtration systems that are very nice, high-end industrial filtration systems, almost, sometimes cost almost as much as the laser, they still can't fil filter out all the smells from things like acrylic and even wood. They have difficulty filtering that out, even with a carbon filter and a HEPA filter. So you're really going to need an enclosure for this, which there's lots of enclosures on Amazon available for this. And you're going to need an exhaust fan to go along with it and some ducting to duct the fumes outside. And it's not really just as easy as just like running the pipe up to the window or something and that's it. You really have to get that duct far away from your house or your window such that the negative pressure created from the exhaust doesn't just draw the smell right back into the room where you're cutting. So make sure you keep an eye out on all those future upgrade videos like the enclosure, an air assist, a grid table, a rotary table. I'm going to be doing all kinds of mods and improvements to this laser cutter.